Hey there and welcome to Retouching Skin Part 3. In this section I'm going to show you how to expand the dynamic range of a portrait. Now, what do I possibly mean by that? Well, we're going to start off with this image, Learn Retouch 7.dng. Now, as I zoom into the skin here, you can see we do see detail here in pretty much most of the skin, but in some of this lighter areas like over here, over here, and up here, we actually are losing a little bit of detail to the light. And that's something that happens a lot. Like so a lot of the time you'll have a great amount of detail in one part of the face and in a different part of the face, it'll just be a little bit too light. So what we're gonna do is show you how to basically export out two different versions from Lightroom and then combine those together in Photoshop. Okay, so the first version is going to be this version, the completed version. So we're gonna right click, we're gonna go down to export and then we're just gonna export these out as JPEGs for the time being. There we go, JPEGs, and we're gonna hit export. Let's go ahead and put it in our images folder. All right, so we'll have Flurn, X, Flurn Retouch 7.jpg. Okay, so that's the first file. Now the next file is what we're gonna be used to get our highlights in order. So for this one, what we're gonna do is lower our exposure down. All right, and now with our exposure a little bit lower, you can see a lot more detail in these areas of skin that we were losing detail previously. So bring our exposure down until we can see those details, basically. Now, along with bringing your exposure down, most of the time when you do bring your exposure down, it lowers the saturation of skin. So we're gonna bring the vibrance up just a little bit to kind of counteract that. There we go. And now this is gonna be our second export. So we're gonna right click here, go down to export, export with previous, same settings, images, we'll hit open, and now it says the file already exists. So we'll just say use unique names. All right, there we go. So we've exported two different versions of the same file from Lightroom. And now if you want, you can just bring this right back to where it was. All right, we're gonna go ahead and quit Lightroom and now in Photoshop, I'm gonna open both of those files. So Command O, we're gonna click on Retouch 7 and 7-2.jpg. There we go. So we'll make that smaller, make this one smaller. And then I'm gonna use my Move tool to get this image onto that image. So Move tool, hold the Shift key, which will keep everything centered, and click and drag from one image over to the other. All right, then we're gonna close this out. Okay, so my goal here is to make this image show up basically just in the lighter parts and not in the darker parts. I don't need to make all of the skin darker. I just want to add more detail to some of these lighter parts in the skin. So you want to put your dark exposure on top and your light exposure on bottom. All right, the next step is to use Blend If to get these two to blend together. So we're going to double click here on our layer one, the darker exposure. And here in Blend If, we're going to choose this layer. Okay, Alt or Option, I'm gonna click here from the left and start dragging to the right. Now, basically this represents the dark areas of this layer and this represents the light areas. So by coming from the left to the right, <clears throat> we're basically saying the dark areas of this layer, I don't want to be visible, okay? If I did the right to the left, it would say the light areas I don't want to be visible and you can see what's happening there. Okay, so dark areas we don't want to be visible because we just want the highlights to show up. All right, so we're gonna hold Alt or Option, which is gonna allow us to separate out these two sliders. And then I'm gonna to go to the right, pretty much all the way. All right, there we go. That looks pretty good. All right, let's hit OK. So now what we have is a combination of those two exposures. Looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and zoom in here and we can figure out about where we actually want this to be visible. I'm gonna put a layer mask on here, a black layer mask by holding Alt or Option and clicking on my layer mask. And then we're gonna choose a large soft brush and we're gonna paint this back visible over areas like the highlights that we want a little bit more information. There we go, let's cover the chin. And this area, we don't, we don't need to cover that at, at all. All right, now in this case, it's not an extreme example. We do have a decent exposure for the majority of my image. It's just a couple of places that are a little bit overexposed. We'll take care of the ears and we can take care of the skin as well. There we 
go. All right. Now we did say earlier that it does tend to gray out a little bit. And you can see this is like, it's less, it has less color than the areas around it. So we are going to run a color balance adjustment layer on top of this to make sure it shows up correctly. So I'm going to grab an adjustment layer. We're going to go down to color balance, and then I'm going to clip the color balance to layer one. You can do that by right clicking and go down to create clipping mask. Now a clipping mask means that this color balance is only going to affect this layer, the darker layer. Okay. Now skin is a combination of red and yellow. All skin is orange. So we're just going to add some red. There we go. And we're going to go towards yellow. All right. And there we go. We should have something that looks a lot more natural. So there's the before and the after. You can see the before is a little bit more gray and the after has a little bit more color, which is what we want. All right. So let's go ahead back into our darker layer here and we can start working on a little bit more fine tuning. There we go. You can see, let's just go back to the original. This is what it looks like um, without any um, changes there. And here's what it looks like with all of our changes applied. So we'll drag this from the left to the right. And then this one will come a little bit left from the right again. All right, that looks great. So the the thing we're doing here is really, it's, it's really just a balancing act. There we go. Let's go ahead and paint white all over her face there. It's really a balancing act between two different exposures here to find the best place where they combine and give us the best of both world. All right, because this version here, her face is much too light. This version, her face, I mean, we definitely have all of our exposure intact, but maybe it's just a little bit less contrast than we want. So basically our goal is complete here, expanding the dynamic range of a portrait. We did it guys. It's really, really cool. Let's just change this back to change this back just how it was before. So you guys can see, and then we'll go through. There we go. So that's basically how it was before with the layer mask on there. And then here is the after with some color correction on. Now we can choose to either lower the opacity um, or make it more visible, but we'd have to use blend it for that. So we're going to lower the opacity just a little bit until we start to bring our contrast back in the skin, but still see detail in all those lighter areas. All right, there we go. So let's go ahead and turn this layer off and then back on. So we can see all those areas that were just a little bit too light. We now have skin detail where we didn't before. All right, guys. And that's all there is to combining multiple exposures to expand the dynamic range of a portrait. So we're able to go from that to that. In this case, it was relatively subtle, but sometimes you're overexposed by quite a bit or underexposed. And you can use this exact same technique to work on any of those images as well. All right, guys, that's it. That's the end of section three. We'll see you in the next section.